Hi, I'm Leon, the founder of Audio Advice. This video is on the latest home theater receivers and processor from RCAM. At Audio Advice, we have been big fans of RCAM sound for over 30 years. RCAM got started in 1976 with some engineering students at Cambridge University who created an integrated amp called the A60. Ever since then, they have mostly focused on producing great value two-channel stereo products. Their gear has won numerous awards over the last several decades, and I've always loved its warm and engaging sound quality. RCAM dabbled around in home theater in the early 2000s, but it was not until they were acquired by the Harman Group in 2017 that they started getting serious about home theater in addition to two-channel stereo. The Harman Group owns a great many high-performance audio companies, including two of our other favorite brands, JBL and Lexicon. With the deep knowledge and resources Harman could provide in the home theater world, it's a great marriage with a company who knows how to make amazing sound with one that can handle all of the software and HDMI issues that can bog down a niche, smaller type company. Their first round of Dolby Atmos based receivers they introduced a couple of years ago totally delivered on great sound, but it was apparent the Harman software expertise was not fully embedded at RCAM yet as they had a few bugs even though they sounded fantastic. We've been extensively testing the new models and are very happy to say the software works perfect. We've yet to see any glitches at all. These new products are three home theater receivers and one surround sound processor. In this video, I'll go over the features they all share and get into why you might want to move up within the receiver models. All the new models have a similar appearance with a darker gunmetal finish and silver knobs and buttons. What they really nailed from a user's perspective is the front panel display. Most displays these days are pretty hard to use for any type of setup as you just can't see enough to easily navigate. All of the RCAM units have a very large and easy to read display with a great GUI. You can quickly navigate through menus using the front panel, which is pretty cool. Build quality is very good, which is what you would expect in this price category. The fit and finish is great and the appearance perfectly matches some of the companion amplifiers you might want to pair up with some of these receivers. These all share a lot of technology I'll go over now. You can truly tell the backing of Harman allowed the RCAM engineers to include all the latest features you commonly see on mainstream home theater receivers along with the RCAM sound that made them famous. From a surround sound mode perspective, they cover all the bases with Dolby Atmos, DTSX, and even Oro 3D. On the video side, they have HDMI 2.1 and HDCP 2.3 and support Dolby Vision, HDR10+, HDR10, and HLG. All of the inputs also support 8K 60 frames per second and 4K 120 frames per second. That's pretty impressive even compared to anything else on the market. All of the models have seven HDMI inputs and one of them is set up to work with eARC. On the two-channel digital side, you get four coax and three Toslink digital inputs. In other words, these units can handle super complex systems. The only thing missing is a phono preamp, but I feel for someone getting a unit that sounds as good as these RCAM units, you'll probably want an external phono preamp anyway. To get your favorite streaming sources into your home theater, you'll find Google Chromecast, Apple AirPlay 2, Bluetooth AdaptX HD, and Harman's Music Life app, which gets you Tidal, Cobuzz, Deezer, and Napster. These units are all rune ready and support MQA as well. I really like the level of control the RCAM units give you over the fine tuning your speakers to your subwoofers. You'll find the ability to set crossover points in 10 hertz increments and in something I've only seen in 20k plus units like the Datasat, the ability to change the crossover slope from 12 dB, 24 dB, 36 dB, even 48 dB per octave. Very impressive. All four products use the same high end DAC set from ESS Technologies. The DAC is the piece of hardware and technology that translates your ones and zeros from digital into analog. ESS is recognized by audio engineers as the place to go to get the best sounding DACs. Two ESS ES9026 Pro Sabre DACs are used in all of these units. It's a 32-bit, 8-channel DAC designed for high-end audio equipment. Needless to say, the sound of these products is what you would expect from very high-performance audio gear. I'll get into the audio differences you hear from the internal amplifier differences when I go over each piece of equipment. When I tested out the AV41 in a great two-channel stereo system to hear how good the DACs were, I was very impressed. 
I had it connected up to a pair of Arial 7T speakers and a Cambridge Edge power amp in a two-channel system. The subtle nuances this system was revealing made me think I was listening to a very high-end two-channel DAC preamp combo. It's definitely audiophile level without a doubt. At Audio Advice, we are huge fans of properly done room correction. Dirac, in my opinion, is one of the best ones out there, and all of these models give you the latest Dirac Live software. Dirac has gotten very easy to use, even for a novice, and the results in most rooms are just stunning. Dirac has just introduced what is called Dirac Live Bass Control, which does even more to blend multiple subwoofers with your speakers. There are only a few home theater receivers on the market that can even employ this advanced version of Dirac, and if you want to use it, any of the Arcams will handle it, but it is an additional purchase from Dirac. While the Arcam units come with a decent microphone, if you're serious about great sound, I recommend you purchase a better aftermarket model. The Mini DSP one is a great one for the money. If you're like most of us into this fun hobby, you might enjoy music or movies in your home theater by yourself, with just a couple of people, or a large group of friends. This is where these products are really cool. When you take your direct measurements using the microphone, you can focus the measurements on just one chair, a couple of chairs, or your entire room. Then the room correction will be based on making it ideal for those seating positions. With the RCAM units, you can then load three different direct correction curves into the unit, even going so far as to assign them to an input. This way you can easily pull up the one that best suits your listening use case at that time. That's just super cool. Now I'll go over what you get as you move up from one unit to the next. The AVR11 has all of the features I just talked about with 12 channels of surround decoding on board. There's seven power channels built in rated at 80 watts per channel. The amps inside are class AB type and are pretty beefy. There are preamp outs for all of the 12 channels. This means you can start out with the very popular Dolby Atmos configuration of 5.1.2 with five bed level channels one pair of Atmos and a subwoofer, then later if you want to add a four channel power amplifier to get the 7.1.4, you can with the preamp outs. The next model up, the AVR21, has the same number of power channels on board, but it has some pretty big upgrades. First, the power supply is much more robust and it's a toroidal transformer type. It is raised 110 watts per channel, but what's interesting, while the AVR11 is rated at 80 watts into 8 ohms and 100 into 4, the AVR21 comes closer to the ideal power amp of doubling down into 4 ohms and gives you 175 watts there. The AVR21 will give you a lot more dynamics and control compared to the AVR11. With the AVR21, you also get another 4 assignable outputs with 16 channels of processing power built in. You can assign these to be something like 9.1.6 or you can make each one a subwoofer channel for individual control. It's just super flexible, even allowing you to make the sub stereo or mono and even base this by input. Simply add more amp channels to the AVR21 and you can totally max out any of these three great surround sound formats. The AVR31 has the same decoding features as the 21 and is purely a better sound unit. It does not give you any more than the seven built-in amp channels, but changes them to class G power. If you know very much about high-end, high-performance audio, you know the ultimate amp is a Class A type. With Class A, the transistors that do each half of the waveform never shut off. The advantage is super pure sound, but the disadvantage is it can run very hot. Class G was invented to provide Class A power up to a point, which here is around 20 watts per channel, then switch over to Class AB when you go above that power rating, which in this amp is spec at 120 watts per channel. I see the biggest advantage of this is for someone who wants to get really into enjoying music as well as movies in their home theater. For speakers that are fairly sensitive, you'll be using Class A for all but the loudest passages, giving you that eerie sense of realism only a Class A amp can provide. If you see yourself being more of a movie buff, without much critical serial listing, the AVR21 is probably the better way to go, as it still sounds darn good as well. Take everything you found in the AVR21 or 31 in terms of inputs and outputs without any amplifiers built in, and you have the AV41. You get 16 balanced and 16 RCA outputs, and you can mix and match which suits your system the best. I love balanced audio for the way it totally eliminates any noise the cable might pick up, which is why all professional touring audio systems use balanced audio cables. This type of connection is also super solid as a much more massive physical connector. When you look at the world of separate surround sound processors, the AV41 gives you a ton of great options and is possibly the best value even at its price when you compare it to the competition. 
It's got 16 channels of processing on board, great DAX, Dirac, it does DTSX, Dolby, Atmos, and RO3D, and it has some very flexible ways to configure it, and it has all the modern age music streaming tech on board too. The new units from Arcam give us that rare combination of great sound in just about every single piece of tech you would want in the home theater world. They are certainly not at the bottom of the cost stack for home theater components, but worth every penny for what they provide. I compliment Arcam for bringing it together audiophile level sound with some super cool features and the incredible direct room correction system. If you want your home theater to sound amazing, you should definitely check out these new units from Arcam. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to be sure you don't miss any of our great content. Also, check out the playlist section of our channel to find any content you may be looking for. If you have any questions, feel free to give us a call, chat with us on audioadvice.com, or stop by one of our award-winning showrooms. We'd be happy to help. We'll see you next time.